My name is John Black and I fly powered paragliders. Uh, powered paragliders are easy to transport and just a lot of fun. You don't have a lot of instruments or anything to mess around with like you do in fixed winged aircraft. For me the thing that makes powered paragliding just, just a joy to fly is the fact that you strap a motor on your back, clip up, you stand up, you pull a wing up, you turn around and you run. And your landing gear are right here, your legs and your feet. So being able to run into the air is just an amazing concept. It's kind of what we dream about as kids doing. If any of you remember when you were a kid, much like myself, tying mom's towel around your neck and spreading your arms out and running across the, the front lawn like you're Superman or Batman expecting to fly at any moment, then you'll understand what we do as powered paragliders. We literally spread our arms out, take off and run, and we do fly. Because there's no metal or cockpit around me that you would have in a fixed wing aircraft, the freedom and being able to feel the air and feel the elements as you're flying through them is much like a bird would experience. And it's just the most amazing feeling. And it's what everybody dreams of, every pilot I think dreams of, it becomes lighter than air and experience flight. It's not hard at all to lay out a powered paraglider when you take it out of the bag, you straighten your lines out, make sure there's no tangles in it, nothing's gone through another line. You lay it out in a semi arc, kind of the way it flies in the air, and then you lift up on the A lines, which go to the leading edge. That exposes the air cells to the wind. When that happens and they start filling up, it comes off the ground, raises up, comes overhead. It's an amazing thing to see a wing come up off the ground and right over your head and just kind of stay there. These are your A risers. They go to the leading edge of the wing. And if you notice, when I pull on these a little bit, the wing kind of catches air and starts wanting to fly up. If I pull these hard, it'll come all the way off the ground. It just really wants to go into that flying configuration. You have four sets of risers here, your A's, your B's, your C's, and your D's. These are your brake lines, and they go to the very trailing edge, and they're why, how we steer by pulling on these on either side. Uh, each of these lines is Dyneema or Super Dyneema wrapped with nylon, so they're very strong. Each, any one of these lines would hold my body weight. Notice I'm offsetting the riser so that it flies back overhead. This is what you would be doing with weight shift. If I pull this way, the wing will go that direction. If I pull this way, the wing will turn and go in that direction. So by doing this, I'm just kind of doing what we would be doing weight shifting in our aircraft. If I grab further back here, it changes the flying configuration, takes it out of flying configuration, and the glider comes down. These are our hang points where we hook into with carabiners. This is our trim system. By going out, we allow the back of the glider to come up. The glider has less of an angle of attack, so it becomes a faster glider. We always take off with them in. That's the safest and certified way to take off. Paragliders are very, very maneuverable craft. Uh, to go up, we simply grab our little throttle here and we press the throttle. To go down, we let off the throttle. If we want to turn right, we pull the right brake handle and we look to the right. And we lean that way. And the craft turns that way. If we want to go left, we pull the left side. We fly in this configuration and it's very comfortable, very relaxed very easy to do so there's very few things to control on a powered paraglider very simple aircraft to control most powered paraglider pilots enjoy flying low and slow it's totally different than most aircraft because we fly an elliptical wing that has us suspended below it about 15 feet we can fly just off the ground or with our toes dragging in the sand safely the sensation of flying mere inches over the ground or with your toe dragging in the sand is an amazing feeling. It's something you can't get in any other type of craft. Seeing the earth 
close up and flying about 10, 15, 20 miles an hour. Just an amazing feeling. One of my favorite things to do is to introduce other people to our sport and the beauty of flying slow and low and in the manner we do, which is running into the air. You get a lot of attention, of, of course, on the beach from people that watch from very young to the very old. They all want to know what it is, how you do it, and some of them want to know if they can do it. So we offer tandem flights, and they're tandem instructional flights. We try to teach them something about the sport and how we control the craft, and of course, how to launch. My name is Ricardo Maciel, and always I wanted to have some experience like this. John told me wrong when I told you, when I tried to run, but I, I switched for jumping, and he said, no, 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 no. And we, he said, okay, let's do it next time, but just run, run it. And I just said, I'm gonna run, I'm gonna run, I'm gonna run. We get into there and he's already in his seat and I'm in my seat and I'm making my turn off to the right and I look and his little feet are still just going like a rat on a wheel. And uh, I had to tap on him, get him to stop running. It's a little weird because you, you feel like they're pulling you like this and it's like, okay, forget about this, just keep, keep, keep running and, and you don't feel any, any sand or whatever. It's a little, Weird, but nice. My husband's always wanted to do this. He's flying right now, and we finally got to get his dream come true. Um, we always see these go by the beach, and I'm so glad he's up there right now. It's something like a, you feel free. You can see the nature that God made for us. It's like a, you want to be a relax. It's it's great. You can see the sharks or any any kind of creatures of the sea. It's, it's great. It's great. He was just amazed at what he could see, both in the air on the ground and in our beautiful water, which is emerald green and clear as gin water. Rays, you see sharks, you see fish, you see everything out there, dolphins. And he become like a little kid again, just curious and just a hundred questions a minute going on. So that's part of the joy for me as a tandem instructor. We often get questions from people about our craft and asking, you know, how much fuel does it burn? How strong is it? Uh, what do you have to have to carry it? Well, the simple truth is, it's the most portable aircraft in the world. It can literally fit in the front seat of a car broken down. You can break it down very small and put it in the front seat of your car if you need to, or in your trunk or on a little rack, or if you have a little trailer, that's nice. You don't even have to break it down. Um, most, most of our powered paragliders will burn somewhere between eight-tenths of a gallon to a gallon an hour. So very economical way to fly and very simplistic way to fly. They're, they're very much like a sailplane is they're very efficient and, and we have a lot of people come from different disciplines that fly different types of ultralight aircraft and they find they like these because the simplicity, you can carry it around with you, you don't have to have a hanger, you don't have to have anybody to tow you up. Typically an area that I fly in, if I have a little bit of wind on a typical day, we'll have seven or eight miles an hour of wind and I can typically take off in five to ten steps. It doesn't take a lot of real estate for these if you have the skill level to to launch in small areas. It opens up a world of possibilities because instead of having to have a field that's, you know, a couple of hundred yards long to take off with something that's heavy, we're very light, foot launched, and you find fields and places to fly all over the place, places you normally wouldn't think of flying and experience new places from a different vantage point. So are there different size wings? There are different size wings for different pilots. Smaller pilot, of course, doesn't need as large a wing. Um, and of course a larger pilot will need a larger wing. Uh, in my case, because I've been flying a long time and I like aggressive wings, sometimes I fly itty bitty wings that, and, and you can be more aggressive with them and of course they're faster. Pretty easy to learn first time up. But... It takes about seven to ten days to learn how properly really? to fly. Most of that time spent learning to control the glider and glider mastery. This is one of the few sports flying wise that you learn on the ground completely. Most people think that this is our aircraft. This just pushes us into the air, gives us thrust. Our actual aircraft is our paraglider. It's an elliptical wing that when inflated and moved through the air creates lift very efficiently. Uh, most have about a 10 to 1 glide ratio with the motor about 7 to 1. When we train somebody to fly, it's not necessary to be in the air. In fact, we train on the beach or in fields, on the ground, learning to master the glider, learning to master the paraglider is the most important aspect of our training. 
The second would be making good decisions. It's fun to play with these things. Let's go. Come on. Yeah, left brake, left brake, hard left brake. Feeling for those A's, and if you're gripping them, you won't feel them come tight. See? There you go, good. There you go. Yeah, I already fly tracks and didn't want to bring it down here, so I got called John to see if he could train me foot launching, and so I came down here to try to get some foot launch training. Your eyes toward where you're going, which is into the wind. You can feel it with your ears. Your ears are real sensitive. You turn your head back and forth, you can pick right where that wind is. There's that wind right there. He was teaching me how to pull the glider up and control the glider. Uh, once you get the control, fully control of the glider on the ground, the flying part's easy. I mean, all you gotta do is pull left to go left, right to go right, add power to go up, and use your brakes when you come in, and that's it. Let's go. Hit it hard. Hit it hard. Push, 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 push. Check, get moving. Stand up, stand up. Left brake, move right. And follow it. Look out. Look at the corner. Left brake. Left brake. Step right. Good. That was good. That's what I wanted to say. So, so free. I mean, you've never had a freer feeling than uh, foot launching and getting down, you know, flying three foot off the ground or 500 foot high. I mean, just whatever, right over the treetops. It's just, it's a blast. If you're an EAA member and, and you're out looking to fly for the pure enjoyment of flying, I invite you to look at powered paragliding. I think you'll enjoy the simplistic joy of flying, being able to fly extremely low and extremely slow, and you'll enjoy the portability of this sport. It's very simple, very fun, and if you're trained correctly and you get good equipment, it's just the best thing you'll ever do in your life.